Well, uh, apparently, we were about to start filming. I'm not sure where Zach went. Um, this is Zach and Martin at the movies. I'm Martin. Zach is... Hopefully, we'll be back. So, this is episode three, and we're going to count down numbers 10 through six of our top ten movies we've seen this year of 2012. So, I guess um, I'm going to have to get started without Zach, and you know what? I got it! Okay. Um, that's a penguin costume. You told me to suit up. Yeah, I meant like suit up, not suit up. It's a penguin suit. It's still a suit. I, uh, penguins look very dapper, okay? He makes a valid point. And so, plus, look, it's got this cool thing up here. Hold on, look, watch. <clears throat> See? It's got a nose. Mm. He just it's hit me with a penguin nose. Yeah, okay. It's fun. So... So, to celebrate the top ten movies of this year, what we've seen so far, mm -hmm. we're going to start uh, with the drink of the episode. Woohoo! Empty glasses! The, these aren't they the aren't drink. Glasses, see? They're not the drink of the episode. We're going to be drinking some fine Welch's sparkling white grape juice for the occasion. The classier of the juices. It is the classier of the juices. Look at that. It's got a little foam to it there. Wow. Very nice, very nice. Mine. My turn. All right. We'll put the rest of that off to the side for now. A toast to a the top ten. A toast to the top ten. Clink. I'm sorry, clink. That's good. Okay. So, um, here it is. The top ten movies of the year. Numbers ten through six. Also. Six. The number two worst movie of the year will be in this too as well. But we're going to kick right into the top ten. Number ten. Ten. Seven psychopaths. Se seven. Yes, Zach, that's seven. Sorry, that's eight, that's seven. Yes, he can count. Woohoo! All right, so seven psychopaths. This is the newest movie on this list. Um, we saw it. It's the weirdest movie we've seen of the year. Like, we said in the other episode, we said that Moonrise Kingdom was a really weird one and was close. This, however, is the same general concept of that people won't see it mm -hmm. because it's really awkward. Yeah. But it's amazing. It is. It really is. It's, really it's amazing. It's a self-aware movie. It knows. It knows. It's a movie. It does. It really does. They make references. Like if you notice in the poster, there are these two female characters who are just uh, who are there. And I'm sorry, I thought the thing stopped recording for a second. Um, and they make a reference that none of the female characters in this movie have a lot to say or are smart in any way. And it's true. These two and women... And then it cuts... And then it never goes to the, and never, the women they're characters. Each, they're each in one scene and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, but no, Christopher Walken, amazing. Christopher Walken. Um, if you remember from the first episode one, I do this when it comes to Colin Farrell. This is one of those movies that makes me do this. I did. I was a big Colin Farrell supporter, were, if you remember. He was. He was a fan of Colin Farrell. So when Colin Farrell gets an Oscar... <laughs> I can be the one. I can be the one that said I was behind him 100%. And I'll be the one sitting there going, salute. <laughs> salute. Anyway. But Colin Farrell does a good job. Um, Sam Rockwell. Mind blowing in this movie. Same thing with Woody Harrelson. He's really funny. He's really he's funny. Really funny. He's like, he's the one, he's the one that's fully self aware that this is yeah, a movie. Yeah, he is fully self aware this is he's a movie. He's the one that goes, man, this would be a great ending. <laughs> that was the one part that I really liked about this movie. Was there's a scene where they're all, where they're all in this, um, in the car, and the guy, Colin Farrell, and he's writing a, a movie or a book. Movie. Yeah, a movie that's called Seven Psychopaths, and it's basically. Him thinking up the story to his life that's happening. And there's a scene where him, um... Walkin' and Rockwell. Yeah, Rockin', Walkin', Walkin'. Walkin'. And Rockwell are all in the car together. And they're like, yeah, this would be a great, this would be a great ending scene. Where they all ride off into the sunset. No, no big shootout, no nothing. Just ride off into the sunset. And then it backs up and shows the car riding out into the sunset. Yeah, but the movie continues and keeps, on. Yeah, and then it keeps continuing. Oh. Which I was really excited that yeah. they should put that on there. It was, it was a great moment. Woody Harrelson's great in this <laughs> movie. He just uh, wants his dog. He does. He really <laughs> wants his dog. And it's one of those movies where, like, Woody Harrelson's clearly the bad guy, mm -hmm. but you're sitting there going, man, I, I kind of want to get his dog. I want this guy to get his dog. <laughs> I did. I want him to get his dog back. It was so sad. Tom Waits, he's not in the movie a lot. No. But, man, he 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 steals the show when he, got, when he has his seeds. Martin almost jumped up for joy 
when he came on screen. <laughs> it was a good time. It was pretty funny. It was. It was a good but time. But anyway, um, Seven Psychopaths is about Seven Psychopaths. It is. It really is. And the movie has this great little fact that every time one of the psychopaths shows up, it's got this little uh, keyboard typewriter, typewriter, typewriter thing. telling yeah. each psychopath. So it's like the first psychopath is called the Jack O Diamonds or yeah. Jack O Hearts. It's one of the two. Um, and Diamonds. Diamonds. And he's Jack shooting mob men. And that's, the movie starts with this great discussion about being shot in the eye by two mob guys. <laughs> that's the beginning. Yeah. That, that, that's the opening scene. Is How would you feel about getting shot in the eye? And it goes through yeah. and it's like, James Dean got shot in the eye. Yeah, <laughs> but then all of a sudden you start to see Jack O'Diamonds walk up behind him. And I started geeking out because I knew how this scene was going to end. Zach started geeking out because he knew how this was going to end. And he shoots them both in the face. It was pretty great. <laughs> it's a good time. And the movie just continues off from there. And it stays. And it just keeps building on that kind of movie Funny, idea. Yeah. And it is, I feel like if you would ever write a movie like this, that's totally it, it would be really... It would be really self-aware. <laughs> it would be. It'd be self-aware. Like, until the movie Deadpool comes up, this is probably the most self-aware movie you're going to get. Oh, I can't wait for that. I it's can't wait for Deadpool either. It's going to be awesome. Uh, getting back on to Seven Psychopaths. Yeah. Seven Psychopaths, great movie, bottom of the list. Bottom, but it was good. But it was it good. Was good. Like, like, this one held solid the moment This one solid. did. This one was solid. This is number 10. This is in there. It's got to be in there. So that's Seven Psychopaths. Yeah. That's that's number ten. Number nine is the most surprising movie on this entire list it's, for one reason and one reason only. I'm not going to throw the poster up there just yet. Yeah. For one reason, I want to explain something. This is a sequel. All right. Safe to say, this is a sequel of, to a movie. Yeah. We hated the original. It was. Flat it out. was just bad. It was a bad movie. Like original. it was an action. It was an action movie that went over the top with action and didn't put any plot into the movie. Yeah. It's like, we are an action movie, we're going to put as much action in this movie, it's going to be great, it's going to be the summer action yeah. movie. But didn't put enough plot into and the movie. we were bored with it, we didn't like it. We ended up seeing the second one out of pure boredom. The second one, of course, if you haven't figured it out yet or not, is... The Expendables, Expendables 2. 2. Which is great because I think, personally, just how this movie went, is that Stallone made The Expendables with the intent to have... Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, and then he he became he was governor at the he time. He was governor at the time and couldn't be in it, and so he's like, okay, well we'll work around that for now. Mm-hmm. And then he still kept being governor, so, yeah. he, so he couldn't put him in. And then in this movie, he went, well screw it, he's gonna be in this movie. Yeah. And then they threw Bruce Willis in this movie. He, Bruce Willis returned. And Chuck, uh, Norris. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris was in this Jean movie. Jean Claude Van Damme. Talk, oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, we're gonna we'll get we're to gonna that. move on. Um, we're going to keep talking, but before we get to that, the most amazing part of this entire movie, um, it, was, it was just really good. It was, like, far and away better than I was expecting. I was going to see, to make, I was, we were going to make fun of it. That was the main point of us going to see it, actually. Yeah, was to go make fun of uh, The Expendables 2, because we didn't like the first one, and we knew we were going to make fun of the second one, and Zach is taking off his penguin shoes. Dude, it's freaking hot. I don't know if you know this, but Halloween costumes are super warm. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Plus, I'm wearing, um, like, a long sleeve shirt anyway, so. The key to this one that was different is the first one focused a lot on Jet Li, Stallone, and Statham's characters. Yeah. It was a real character-driven movie. This one said, screw character-driven movies. We want an action movie. <laughs> and another funny part of this movie is that Jet Li... It gets, it gets third bill, third billing in this movie, and is in the movie. No lie, this is not an exaggeration. In the movie, for only maybe twenty minutes. The pre credits. Yeah, he leaves this movie before the Expendables two comes on the screen. Three. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Yes, it's like, oh, we're gonna pay you to be in this movie, and then you're gonna jump out of a plane, and you're not gonna be seen again. None. Uh, Van Dam, Van Dam villain. Is great. He is. Far and out, one of the best villains I've seen in a long time. I like that he wore shades the whole time. Yeah, that was good. That was nice. Like, I think that that added to his like. I liked. Char- I liked his fight scene with Stallone because he <laughs> won <laughs> Stallone in that entire fight. You, if you, when you watch this, you will go, man, Jean Claude Van Damme is doing great here. What is wrong with Stallone? And then, and then it's like even the people filming it had that same thought because he's doing great. He's doing great. And all of a sudden, Stallone like comes out of nowhere. Yeah, like, and he starts beating the crap out of him. Sweet. Like, Continue. Beat the crap like, out of him. Yeah, like it's. It looked like <laughs> they were they were doing it, and then the the producers or directors looked at him and went, "Yeah, you're making him look really bad." Yeah. We need we need to switch this because he actually is the good guy. Yeah. So we need to switch this up. Uh, Schwarzenegger and Willis are hilarious in this movie together. That great is scene. That is a great, great scene. scene. That is. That so is there's a, a scene time. where they're all there's this huge firefight and there's banter going back. Um. 
not Stallone. Schwarzenegger. Through this whole movie, they make Terminator references. Through a this lot. Whole entire, through this whole entire movie. And then there's a scene where Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis are sitting there and they're shooting. And um, Schwarzenegger has said through this movie, I'll be back. Then, like a couple times in this movie. And so he says that. And he goes, I'll be back. And he goes, no, you've been back enough. I'll go. And so he goes. And then Schwarzenegger looks at him and goes, yippee ki I guess. <laughs> and then Chuck Norris comes in and shoots somebody. And he goes, who's next, Rambo? And then no joke, it cuts to another stop. <laughs> yeah. it it's great. It is. It's a great moment. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is pretty good. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris comes in. His opening scene in this movie comes in, shoots like 20 guys. Yep. And then just walks on. <laughs> yeah. Like slow uh, camera. It is. <laughs> Watch Chuck Norris be amazing. Uh, that is that is what that scene is. Overall, Expendables 2, best part of this entire movie, our favorite part, the part that made us go in the theater, this movie is so amazing. If we so, could have an award for for best kill in a best movie, kill in a movie, it goes to John claude Van Damme. It goes to John claude Van Damme. So, For this reason. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is in this movie. Bro, no, Chris, no, I'm no, sorry. No, it's no, uh, Liam. Liam. Liam Hemsworth is in this movie. It's one of the three. Um, <laughs> they all look good. And he's essentially a sniper for this group of old soldiers. And he gets taken hostage by Van Damme. And they hold up Stallone's giant freaking knife yeah. that he uses in the first movie and in this it's one. Like, it's like that big. And Van Damme hold, hands it to his second-in-command, who puts it up to Hemsworth's chest. And then, you know, Van Damme's talking, and he's talking. And all of a sudden, he does one of his swinging roundhouse kicks into the back of the neck, the butt of the knife, and shoves it right into Hemsworth's it's like, chest. It's like, it's like this. Here, I'll show you. It's remote. Okay, so... He throws the knife like this. It spins. The guy catches it and holds it to his chest. Guy goes on this little monologue thing. Holding it there. Kicks it. Kicks it like this and goes... And kills him. And it was amazing to watch. Like you were so awesome. And you were awestruck. <laughs> that was the best part of that movie. And yeah, the movie was good. If you don't like the first one, clearly go see the second one. It's way better. It, it way does better. redeem itself. You it does. like it. Um, we still don't like the first one, but man, Expendables 2 came number 9. <laughs> Spendables one wouldn't even broke in the top ten. It would have been down in that like low. We just saw these movies. Yes, yeah, it would have been. So that brings us to number eight. This one is also kind of surprising because you're not gonna believe what we're about to put on the screen. Yeah. But it's it's the Hunger Games. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people have a problem with this movie, and I re- he didn't read the books. I, I read books. I read all three of the books. And I went into this movie because I know how books transferred to movies work, as I guess a lot of people don't. But I know yeah. you're gonna be dis. No, I'm gonna. Okay. I'm good. You're gonna be disappointed with books that get turned into movies because good part of the time they leave out good chunks of movies, and this was no different. But I went into this movie going, I'm gonna watch this as a, as a movie, solely as a movie, and not go, well, I, well, this is wrong with it from the book, this is wrong with it from the book, this is wrong with the book. And as a movie, it is fantastic. It is. As a movie, movie, as a movie, it is a great movie. As a movie, as a book transfer to a movie, it's not so good. Which that's what that's what me and him when we said we liked it got a lot of th- got a lot of comments from our friends. That did read the books that it was bad because this thing wasn't put into it and this thing wasn't put into it. But as a movie, it's good. great. Um, I walked into it going, man, this is kind of that happy, almost tween kind of movie like Twilight. We were bored and he kind of wanted to see it. Twilight. So I said, okay, whatever. It was in the budgets. Yeah. And it was really good. It was interesting. It was engaging. Um Really? I, I like the concept. I like the concept, that, that's, too. That's, that's actually why I read the books, because I like the concept. I like the concept. It's not making me want to run out and read the books, by any means, but... And you're going to say, it's not, it's not making me want to run out and volunteer. <laughs> but I like the movie. I'm going to go see Catching Fire when it comes out. Yeah. I mean, it sold me It sold me on the movie series. It's a good movie series. It's strong. It's well-acted, well-directed. Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson's awesome amazing. Movie. Okay, I'm, I don't know if Woody Harrelson has made any other movies this year. I'm not really... None are coming to my mind, no. except Hunger Games and Seven Psychopaths. Yeah, those are the only ones we've seen. That, that we've seen, and they're both on this list. Them, yeah. So I don't know if Woody Harrelson sways our judgment. No, I don't think so. I don't think so, but... I wouldn't see a Woody Harrelson movie and automatically go, this is amazing. Seriously. It just but, he does do good, good, but he does do good movies. He does good, he does good movies 90% of the time. But yeah, Hunger Games, I liked it, he liked it. It's great. It's great. If you haven't seen it, go see it. But see it 
see it solely for the movie purpose. Like if you if you have read the books, don't go see it thinking about the book. Go see it as solely a movie yeah. because if you see it, sadly, if you see it as this is a book transferred to a movie and try to reference the book, you'll be disappointed and it'll ruin the movie. If it's, you go see it as a movie, though, it's great. It's kind of like we said about Abraham, Va- yeah. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. You just got to go in with the expectation that this is a completely different work yeah. and that it's a different medium. And it's a good movie. It is a good movie. This one, Abraham Lincoln, both good movies. Although, sad part about this movie, it I know that they had to put it in here, but I just hate that they like they were fighting each other and all of a sudden fell in love. Like, all of a sudden, yeah. they're like, I'm trying to kill you. I want to kill you, too. But we kind of have this, like... We don't want to kill each other Sexual thing. tension. Yeah, we don't want to kill each other thing. And all of a sudden, bam, make it out. Like, what? Really? But it had Films. to be in there, so it's not really that big a deal. But All right, so that covers number eight? Yes. That covers we're moving eight. on now. Now we're up to number seven. We're almost we're really close to being yeah. to where we're going to be. Almost. But number seven is one that I can tell you his his vote on this one was swayed. Mine it was wasn't. not. Okay, it, it, was, was, a little, it was a little it was swayed. It is Safe House. You want to know why? Because Ryan Reynolds is amazing in this movie. That's why. That's why his vote. I liked Safe House. Maybe I thought I it was really good. Um, I like Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington does amazing movies. Without a doubt, his best movie of the year. Oh, I wouldn't a, say it's his career. Not of his, his career. Of the, of the well, year. Both of his movies this year did really, really well good. for us. I mean, Flight was his other one. Yeah. They both did really well. I liked Ryan Reynolds. I liked the, con- the concept was amazing. Yes, you do. You love Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> the concept was um, amazing. And I think we said in Ted, I think we said in the last movie, Ted was the only movie Ryan Reynolds did this year. Yeah, yeah I, right, I forgot, right about, here I forgot is, about this. Right here is proof that we're idiots. No, that's proof that we didn't look over <laughs> this while we were talking. Yeah, that's, that's what that proof is. This proves that we do this in one take. Uh, but anyway, so the main concept that I really found interesting, like I bought this movie because I really liked it. I have it too. The main... I actually own all of these that are out on DVD right now. Yeah. That the director did was that he he actually did this. Like, he was a person. Like, he was the Ryan Reynolds character in yeah. this movie. Like, he worked at Safe Houses, was all this stuff, and did a, got out, retired, and then decided, I want to do a movie like this. And actually got so close to how it actually happens that even people, he said it in the, in the special features, that even people that have gone, that do work, in safe houses, have called him up and said, "Wow, it is no, it is, like it is no lie that you worked in this because it is so accurate to what would happen." Yeah, it's it's an amazing movie. It's one of those ones where you just you. I went in it because you know I was going to see a movie, mm-hmm. and this was the movie we were seeing, and I was amused the entire way through. It was a good movie. It held strong. It's it was. I like the psych. I like that it was psychological. Yeah. That that um. Not Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington, but his character. I can't think of his name. I can't think of his name either. But his character was, like, so psychological. Like, calm, collective guy. Like, not that psychological guy that looks psycho. Mm -hmm. But just, like, a calm, everyday guy, but could manipulate your mind like crazy. Yeah. It was awesome. It was. Robert Frost. Robert Frost. No, not Robert Frost. What? No. It's something Frost. Robert Frost is a I know. I know. That's why I said, no, not Robert Frost. It's something Frost. Tobin. Tobin Frost. Tobin. Frost. That's what it is. That's correct. Look it up. I'm right. But no, Safe House, it's a good movie. It's a good watch. Ryan Reynolds, Denzel Washington, amazing. It's got some nice twists in it. Yeah. Um, But no, overall, it's a good movie. It's kind of what you expect when you put those two together. Kind of like... Um, Pretty much. Yeah, it's what you expect when you put those two together. Kind of like this when you kind put of a... Movie. Um, <laughs> kind of when you put um, Christian Bale in... Hugh Jackman? Hugh Jackman together? Yeah. yeah. The Prestige was... Yeah. That's that's a different that's movie for another different day. Yeah, it's the same kind of general concept. It's the same general concept. So go see Safe House. Go rent it. Buy it. It's buy it. Available. Definitely buy it. And now we're up to... Before we cover number six, oh, before we hit number yeah. six, we're going to cover the second worst movie we saw this year, which happens to be a tie. It's a tie! It's a tie right here. It's on my shirt. Tie, tie, tie. 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 It's a tie. It's a tie. That means two movies took it. We're going to do them both at once. And those are, of course, Ghost, Ghost Rider, Rider, The Spirit of Vengeance, and, and Campaign. Campaign. So, Ghost Rider. Man, this movie just sucked. <laughs> okay, so Ghost Rider, this is my issue. Not that I have a problem with, you know, movies that put 
satanic stuff or like dark art stuff in movies because I really don't have a problem with that. But I feel as if they took um, Ghost Rider, the original, and went, okay, we put a little bit in here, and they liked it. Let's go way over the top. Yeah, I felt like they said, we're going to do a sequel that's a reboot. Like, it's yeah. kind of what The Incredible Hulk was, only they had still had Nicolas Cage in this one. And they don't really... Whereas The Incredible Hulk just kind of references the Hulk's origin. Yeah. They go straight out and tell it, but it's not even the same origin. Not the same origin that they use in the other movie. No, it's not the same origin they use in the plus other they, movie. Plus, they had no story to go on. Like, no, they made up another story. Yeah, it's a slow-moving movie. The best part of this entire movie is Ghost Rider <laughs> peeing fire. That's his favorite part. That was the part that we were sitting there, and we're, we were both... Well, all three of us, because we went and saw... It with AJ. With AJ. But, uh... We're all three sitting there going, man, this is really boring. We saw it in 3D. And so we're like, man, this is boring. Like, this is a horrible, horrible movie. Mm-hmm. And then that there's a, and then the part that he was referencing was he, he's talking and he's like, does it hurt? And you don't really know what he's talking about. And then it cuts to a scene of, of Ghost Rider. It's the back of him. And he's just like going like this from the back of him. And you see fire going like sw- swaying around. And then he looks back and does one of these. Yeah, that's the best part. And of then we all movie. three looked at each other and went, "That was awesome, though." <laughs> best part of the entire movie. Nicholas Cage is dry. I can't name any other actor in this thing. The remember when Nicholas Cage was a good actor? <laughs> I remember that. It's called Face Off, Con Air, The Rock, Weatherman, Lord of War. All of those movies where Nicholas Cage can act in. Apparently, he forgot he how forgot to. How? He forgot how. He hit his head and forgot how to act. Um, the three D was good. Yeah, the 3D, the 3D was good. Was good. If, if 3D is going to become a common thing, I think Ghost Rider really hit it on the head what it's going to look like. I don't know what you got to do three, with it. We're 3D. Close. Close to hitting it on the head. Yeah. There's, a movie, there's a movie higher up in our Higher up that hits it on the head. That hit it directly on the head of how, um, of how to do a 3D movie. Yeah, so that's Ghost Rider. It sucked. Also, the campaign. The campaign tied, and we saw this on Election Day. It's when we went and saw The funny movies. part about this is we saw this on Election Day, and all old people were in yeah. the theater. It was nothing but old like, people with us. Like it's almost as if all the old people went campaign. Well, this obviously has to be a yeah. political movie. So why not go watch it? I actually laughed at one point of this movie. <laughs> this is actually a funny point in this movie too. Yeah. It's still not redeeming enough, but it's funny. And I got shushed for laughing. Yeah, I got shushed for loud. At a comedy, loud. At a comedy because comedy. nobody else in the theater was laughing. Yep. Yeah. But no, this movie. I mean, Will Ferrell. I don't like Will Ferrell as a comedic actor. I don't. Zach Galifianakis is good, but this character was lame. Zach Galifianakis is good playing himself. It's true. Not other characters. The best actors in this movie were John Larroquette, Lerich- John Lerich- no, John Lithgow and Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Flat out best actors in this movie, and they're on screen for all of ten minutes. It's, it's sad. sad. It is. Um, you'll get some cheap laughs out of it. But when you walk out of the theater, you'll go, man, that kind of sucks. Man, this is disappointing. And there will be people that will like it because there are Will Ferrell fans. Mm-hmm. But and Zach Galifianakis fans. Yeah. And I'm not and I'm not a, opposed to either of them. No. It's just this movie just wasn't it, all that funny. It me. wasn't a good showcase. It was. And like I said, you laughed and then you walked out of the theater and went, that movie sucked. Yeah. Like it didn't have that any lasting impression. You walked out and went, man, this is lame. Although I did like the... I thought... The concept was good. The concept like, wasn't bad. Like, a politician that would do anything to get higher mm-hmm. and keep his status, and then one that needs that wants to actually do the right thing. Yeah. I like that concept, but it's just... their Holy execution. Execu- yeah, their execution was really bad. So, yeah, so those are the two... That's number two in our worst movie category. Number one's in the next video, and let me tell you, that one's going to be a rant. It's a tie! For this one. For this one. That w- next one is clearly the worst... So that brings us to and number... if you disagree with us on the last one, you obviously have no sense of what a good movie Seriously, is. Seriously, you don't. But we'll get to that in the second half of the top ten. Yeah. But before we finish this video, we've got one more movie to cover, number six, and it is... The, the Dark, Dark Knight, Knight Rises. Rises. Now, first and foremost, we saw this one at midnight. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff happened that night. Neither of us were in that good of moods. So... When we started watching this movie, and we weren't sitting next to each yeah, other. Yeah, I was going to say that. We like sitting next to each other because me and him have an understanding of it doesn't matter the movie. It doesn't matter how much we like the movie. Making fun of it makes us process the movie. Yeah. Like, if we make fun of a movie, it processes and that's the stuff that we remember and it makes us remember the movie better. Yep. 
But if we're not sitting next to each other, we can't joke with people because we we don't have that understanding with other people. Mm-hmm. And that night, a lot of things went wrong. There was a lot of moody people, yeah. and we were just in bad moods as as it wa- as it was. And then we didn't sit, sit sit next to each other. We actually sat different rows. Yeah, actually. behind each other and at an angle, so yeah. we couldn't even like. So we couldn't even like turn around and be like, "That was really funny, wasn't it?" So it forced us. And maybe we are. This kind of makes it sound like movies. It really does. <laughs> it makes it sound like movie stars. <laughs> it does. It does make it sound like movie stars. Anyway, but because that happened, we were just sat. We just sat there and were upset. Yeah. And just ripped apart the movie in a bad way. Yeah, we ripped apart it internally instead of making fun of the stuff that it, you can make fun of, but it's not important. Yeah. And we just focused too much on the stuff we didn't like. On that. the stuff that was missing and the stuff yeah. that could have been better and all that. It and didn't actually pay attention to the movie it's itself. True. Paid more attention to the negative stuff. That was so like. we ended up going to see it again when it hit the budgets. Because we because we decided that maybe we were too judgmental. Because in the first place, we hated the movie. Yeah. We thought it was a horrible, a horrible last stand for, for, for Christopher Nolan. Yeah. And, and so, I still don't think it measures up to The Dark Knight. I really no, don't. I don't but. think... He couldn't. He couldn't measure yeah. up to The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is can't be measured up to because of how... B.A. it was executed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we both decided maybe we were too judgmental, so we were going to go see it again in the budgets. Yep. And, and I actually saw it a second time after we Yeah. So. And we were sitting next to each other. We were able to do the jokes. And it was way better. It was way better the second time around. Yeah. Um, the one part I do agree with other people that have done reviews on this movie, mainly Kevin Smith, because I thought it was really Bane? Funny. Yeah. Was Bane, Bane. Bane. Tom Hardy does an amazing Was job. Bane. Tom Hardy. Again. Again, he, great actor. Great Bane. So, the Bane was awesome because because his opening scene in the movie is just so awesome. Like, yeah. that's the one scene that really sticks out in my mind when I think of this movie is the opening scene where they're on the plane. And they, like, there's a plane dragging a plane and it's kind of going like this and all its wings are falling off, whatever. And he's really on the cool. top and he's on the top and he's dropping down and it's like an upshot. And so all you see is Bane with this, with this awesome mask, bald head... Like, muscle t-shirt with some cargo pants. Just, like, looking down at you, like, holding on. It looks awesome. It does. How does he eat with that thing on? I don't know. <laughs> that was another question. That, that was another had. question. How does he eat? So, I could go on so many rants about what I didn't like about this movie, because a lot of it still holds true. But I decided I'm going to bring up this one fact, just because it's not so much ranty. It's, for any of you who was really oh, I shocked. I know what you're talking about. Shocked at the... Hover the <laughs> autopilot, the autopilot working at the end of the movie. Like Bruce Wayne fixed the autopilot. Watch yeah. when him and Catwoman jump on the thing. They're up at the top of a building. It is hovering three stories below them. Hover. That is autopilot right yeah, there. Yeah, that was one of the things that he pointed out. Like we were watching this and he's like, Alright, this freaking autopilot. They keep talking about this whole he keep talking about this autopilot the entire movie, this freaking autopilot. I know he fixed it, blah blah. And then he gets that scene and he's like, whoa, 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 wait, what? <laughs> What? What? Is that a building? They were hovering. They, Christopher Nolan, has lied to us children. <laughs> told us that Santa was not real. It is. It's like this huge thing. But if you actually sit down and watch the movie and actually watch that That's moment, you movie. go, you you realize that that thing is hovering. <laughs> it is, it, autopilot works right then. And it's not really a BA scene. It's not an amazing no. scene. You can notice it real simple. It's just one of the ones that Martin was like, hey, 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 hey. I will point this out because this is a little thing. This is so little. It doesn't even matter. But I like pointing out. Also, the fact that Gotham in the three movies changes. <laughs> yeah, that was the one that I was just about to bring up. The fact that it becomes a whole city to... A with an city, island. So with, with yeah, island. with an island. To a city with a bridge to an island. With like three bridges to an island. To all of a sudden, it's an island itself. Yeah, with... With outskirts <laughs> of Fort Wayne Manor. With outskirts. With an outskirts. That apparently still have bridges connected to them. Or yeah. I was going to say, it's more of a pen- peninsula. That That's what I agreed upon, that it was a peninsula and not actually that. Because it only shows the one side. Yeah. And the bridge is falling apart. But yeah, so... I thought that was really funny. But otherwise, Dark Knight Rises, not horrible. Not good enough to break into the top five. No. Not that good. That one we're going to get a lot. We're oh, gonna yeah, lot. we're going to get yelled at. When people actually watch it. Oh, yeah. be like, what? Are you kidding me? That should be, like, top two. Yeah. But... So anyway, no, there's one. I want to add. Yeah, I want to add one more thing. All right, add one more thing. The the funny part about this, I pointed it out that night, even though I was in a bad mood, because I just thought it was like so ridiculous. 
was Catwoman <laughs> when she's on the bike. Of course. Okay, so Catwoman gets the gets the bat bike, which I love the bat bike. That's one of the best things Christopher Nolan put in here is the bat bike. But she's on the bat bike, and every time she gets on the bat bike, even the first one, she gets on it, sits, does the whole like lean forward thing, you know, like she does, and then adjusts her butt. Like, like she's sitting on it, she's like, I'm ready to go, and then goes, BAM, butt. Every time she True, sits on she it. Does. Every time she sits on it. It's ridiculous. It is. You put that out, and then I watched it again, I'm like, yep, there's her butt. And she's like, there's her butt. It's, it's almost as if she was sitting on it and about to go and do her scene, and then Christian Miller went, ho, 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 hold up. Your butt is not out enough. Yep. You need to just scoot that back a little bit. Oh, so... I just thought it was so ridiculous. The night we saw this, other than pissing off our friends who went with us by complaining about this movie... So much. Which, at some point of that night, we just kept complaining about it to piss them off. Yeah. Which was fun. Uh, one of my favorite things was they were sitting there going, I was so shocked when this part happened. And I looked at them and went, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> It's like the movie was really telegraphed. I think that's why it fell so far on the list. As it is, it's a really telegraphed. The movie. end of it is. The end is super telegraphed, and you knew the first part wasn't. The first part was good. The first it was, half wasn't bad. It kind of it tried to it tried to piece together. It tried to build a movie off Dark Knight without yeah. referencing Dark Knight. Well, yeah. Without, other than Harvey Dent, that we gotta talk about too. Not referencing the Joker. Yes. So the movie didn't reference the Joker because they believed, out of respect for Heath Ledger. That, uh, make, that making any reference to his iconic character was disrespectful. Would disrespect his memory as the Joker. Yep. I disagree with that idea just for the simple... Not, not that we had any say in this, but I just disagree right. with it. It's on the simple fact that it would honor his memory to bring it up. To make sure that you knew that he to left a lasting impression on Gotham. Yeah, to at least, you know, say that he existed. Yeah, because instead the movie make, gives Harvey Dent the lasting impression. And even it goes, so, far, it goes so far away from the Dark Knight. The only, the only real references to the Dark Knight is the Batbike, Harvey Dent, which isn't really a yeah. reference to the Dark Knight. To the to the Dark Knight, it's actually just its own reference in itself. But Harvey Dent, and then those few cut scenes of Harvey Dent as yeah. the as Two Face. That's it. That's it. And that was really sad. Um, but yeah, we could go so much more on what we didn't like about The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, we could do a whole separate one and just go on and on. But we're not going to. It's a good movie. It made number, it made number you know, six. It's the most... Buy it. Movie. Buy it. Go buy it. It comes buy out it. in December or January, I think. Go buy it. Go late, buy it. Late watch Dece- it. Late December. Late December. I think it's a Christmas movie. Yeah. Uh, go buy it. So, this is, the, this is the end of the half. This is the end. We're about... We're going to... The next video we do... May or may not be the next half. May. May or may not. Or may not. Or may not. We don't know. We might throw a, might throw a video in between. Maybe. Might be fun. Maybe. Maybe. I might have. I might not wear the pigment costume. Though. Please don't. <laughs> I'm but not yeah. wearing a suit either. Though. So good. I'm not gonna wear this stuff again. Good. Um. So yeah. So Just we gonna got, burn it. But no. I like this shirt and I like this coat. But you said you were gonna get rid of it. No, I said I'm not gonna wear it. You said you're not going to wear it again. I said that for the of that video. No, you said not again. You know what? If you're not going to wear it again, you might as well throw it out. No. No. I will not throw it out. I like the shirt. Can you talk, please? These people are sitting here watching us babble. I know. Talk, right? Please? Right? They're watching us talk. Babble. All right. So, uh, we got number five. <laughs> number five through one. Even though I just held up two fingers. Number five to one. Should I do the counting from now on? Please. Five... To one. That's six. No, it's five, two. <laughs> five, two, one. There you go. Now I did the counting. Thank you. Plus the number one worst movie oh, we saw this year. One. I can do one. Five, one. five to one is too hard. For five me. to one. Okay, go ahead. Not five, two, one. <laughs> Would you talk? Yeah, sure. So join us next time. Um... For whatever we do next, and for the bottom, for the top of this countdown, and you know what, we will extend it to the top five movies. If you don't know what the top five movies are, because we didn't tell you, if we told you, we will call you out on this. But if you don't know what they are, yeah. and you can guess our top five movies, we will still send you something. So now we've made it just, even easier. Just the top five. Just the top five. That's all you need. You can't do. You can't do the five we just did. No, it's got to be the top five. <laughs> it's like, man, I got them. Yeah, it's got to be a top five. All right, so we'll see you next time. I'm Martin. I am Zach. We are not at the movies. We are not at the movies. We are sitting in a conference room. We might be at the movies soon, though. We might be. Well, might eventually. Be at, eventually we'll be at the movies again. So we'll see you later. Have a good one. Wow, have a good one? You know what? How do you want to end it? You Fine. Said, you okay, said. okay. This is Martin and Zach not at the movies. You're way too hyper. <laughs> this is Martin. Now you're too quiet. No, hold on.
This is Martin and Zach, not at the movies. If you would like to leave, a, if you would like to leave a detailed message after the beep, oh, so we're an answering machine. Beep. There you go. That's how you end it. That's not how you end it. You end it with an answering machine. No, you don't. Why not? It's weird. People would leave a message. See, then that would get people to comment. You got no. Anyway, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.